Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we are back over here at Animal Kingdom and today we are going to be taking a deep dive, a look into Asia, the land here in Animal Kingdom. And I've actually done two of these videos in the past. I took a deep dive into, into Pandora, the world of Avatar, and I also took a deep dive look at Africa. And so that's what we are going to be doing today with Asia. Asia has a really, really cool backstory, a lot of cool secrets, and a lot of facts that I bet you didn't know. So that's what I'll be explaining to you today. If you haven't got a chance to check out those other two videos, Pandora and Harambe, definitely go check those out. I'll leave a link to those in the description down below. And I'm actually getting all of this information from two Two websites today the first one is the Disney wiki website um, and the next one is theme parks and entertainment.com they have a great backstory history of Asia here at Animal Kingdom now over here at Animal Kingdom pretty much all of the lands here have their own crazy backstory it goes really really deep deeper than any other land at any Disney parks it's really really cool Joe Rody is my favorite Imagineer ever I think he's the greatest Imagineer Disney's ever had he basically oversaw all of Animal Kingdom. This is his work and it shows that I, I, I think Animal Kingdom is the best theme park here at Walt Disney World. But let's get into this Asia history, backstory, and secrets. And then we'll do a tour of Asia after I get done telling you the backstory. So the land of Asia here at Animal Kingdom is set in the fictional town of Anandapur. And in Sanskrit, Anandapur actually means place of delight. And this place was founded in the 16th century. And it actually features two sections, two sections of Anandapur. Um, the first is like the former royal city, which is the formal Anandapur. And then the second part of the city is called Sirka Zong, which is at the edge of the Himalaya mountains. Now this kingdom of Anandapur has been around for a very long time. And most of Anandapur was ruled by the royal family, a group called the Maharaja. The person who was part of that royal family was actually a person named Anatta. He believed in living in harmony with the nature and animals of Anandapur. But unfortunately, one of his successors in the 16th century named Bhima did not share those same ideals. And Bhima actually turned one of the forests, one of the sacred forests in Anandapur into a hunting palace. But actually eventually this would lead to his demise. He was actually killed by some of the tigers there in the hunting grounds inside the forest. But after his death, Bhima's brother actually took over for him and he expanded the palace, but he suspended the hunting. There was no more hunting allowed. And actually just like how it was in real life, in real Asia, um, the British and European forces came into their town of Anandapur and actually started to control everything. And they made it into a colony and pretty much what happened was all the people of Anandapur, they kind of abandoned the complex. I'm sure there was a lot of turmoil and conflict between the people of Anandapur and the British colonizers that came over there, but I couldn't find anything in the backstory about that. So when the British did come over, the people of Anandapur did start to have a tea trade going on, um, turning the area of the Zerkazong into a tea colony. They actually supported this by building a rail, a train, that would transport the tea to and from different tea colonies and this tea company was actually called the Anandapur Tea Company. And everything seemed like it was going pretty good with the Anandapur Tea Company and their new railroad, but they did start to see some problems. They did build this railroad through the Forbidden Mountain in the Himalayas, and this went against local legend. Unfortunately, they were forced to stop doing their tea transportations due to some mysterious circumstances. And legend has it that it was closed because there was some attacks provoked because of the Yeti who lives in the Forbidden Mountain. But eventually years and years went by, years passed. We started this in the 16th century and now we are transported to 1948 when the British forces actually left Anandapur finally and they did regain their independence. And then as soon as the British forces left, the people of Anandapur started to return their town, return their city back to its original state when their founder, Anad, was the leader and basically returned it to his ideals. Focusing on the natural beauty of Anandapur and focusing on the nature, Anandapur became a big, big eco-tourism spot location, specializing on focusing on the animals and the nature of their land. Former royal palace where the Maharaja were ruling um, was then turned into an elaborate nature trail which then opened to the public as the Maharaja Jungle Trek 
The surrounding forest in Anandapur did become protected under law, but the locals did have to fight some people who were there doing some illegal lodging, cutting down the trees illegally, killing the forest, and damaging the ecosystem, which was against what the people of Anandapur wanted, especially now since they are returning to their ways of their founder, Anada. And to counter this, a few local women actually set up a thing called the Cali River Expedition as a way to make money off the land without destroying it and by still keeping it aligned with Anada's principles. And they actually did open up a hotel over here to help with the tourism and they built a restaurant inside of this hotel. The restaurant is known as the Yak and Yeti. All of this was really nice, but the main draw to Anandapur was of course, people would see these huge mountains and they heard of this forbidden mountain that had a very strange backstory, some sort of creature lived inside the mountain and he watched over it so of course people are curious and people are going to capitalize on what people want to do so eventually the t line the t railroad did open back up not to transport tea though it was to transport people through the forbidden mountain through the himalayas to explore this forbidden mountain the T offices eventually became tourism offices, which directed the expeditions. But just as it happened with the T company, the Yeti came back and he started to attack the people who were crossing through the Forbidden Mountain. You're not supposed to go there. It's called the Forbidden Mountain for a reason. The Yeti protects that mountain and he started to attack the explorers. To try to counter this, people of Anandapur set up shrines to kind of honor the Yeti, but that didn't work and the Yeti still is attacking people to this day when they go through those expeditions. So guys, that is the backstory to Anandapur, Asia, here at the Animal Kingdom. A very, very deep backstory. I didn't know the backstory went that deep until I started researching this, but I think it is awesome. It's one of the coolest backstories I've really heard of at Disney Park, One, probably the coolest. So now that we've talked about the backstory of it, now let's go on a tour of Anandapur so I can kind of show you a little bit about where these things happen. So guys, this is one of the entrances to Anandapur. We can look around and see all of the things that the people of Anandapur have done to kind of make this into a tourist destination. And over here, they actually do have a theater where people can come and learn about some of the birds and animals that live here in Anandapur. And if you look up while you're over here, in this land you can see a lot of the things are in the language of the people of Anandapur. I believe it is Sanskrit. There are some things still left over from the ancient people, the Maharaja, like over here, these statues. And overall, you can just tell that this palace right here is probably an old palace that they use for something else. But then the people have recently turned it into a show that people can come watch and learn about the animals of their land. If we look up here, we can actually see a sign. It says, tourists are honored guests. So the people in Anandapur really uh, do honor the tourists. They are really welcoming. And it says, we pride ourselves for very unique shows for your pleasure and I could really go on and on telling you about all kinds of signs in this land we'll, we'll show a, a few of them like right here this one says a visitor noticed all visitors welcome to best enjoy our beautiful open-air theater and then by the theater there's actually a little stage over here where some people have been seen doing dances a local anandapur people are doing traditional dances right by this big banyan tree this is what this is called a big banyan tree and we can see it's been decorated with a bunch of cool things that they have but you can see they are very serious about keeping to their customs so don't mess with the nature don't mess with the animals as do not feed animals in the area so continuing past the theater we come up on this area where we see some sort of shrine that they have made it looks like it's been destroyed and it's right under this cool tree um, and actually to the left we see the hotel so this is the hotel that I was telling you guys that they built for the tourists here it actually has a restaurant in it as well called yak and Yeti it's actually a very good restaurant if you ever want to come over here really really good food but we can actually see on this tag right here this building was actually made June 8th, 1924. That was actually during the British rule of Anandapur. And Yak and Yeti actually has a pretty cool backstory as well. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I believe it is owned by these two, by this couple, a man and a woman own this whole hotel slash restaurant. And the thing that I love about Anandapur is like all of this cool little detail that they add in here. Like they, they didn't need to add this stuff, but it makes it that much better. This is what really makes animal kingdom and what makes this land 
you see some sort of local has left all of this stuff here i don't know it looks like they're moving houses maybe and if you don't want to sit at the actual restaurant at yakin yeti you can come over here to anandapur local food cafes comfortable courtyard seating is back here and this features food probably from uh, the people of anandapur local delicacies but i just really love the look of the buildings looks like it's been here for a very very long time and actually if we look down at the ground while we are walking around we can see it's tire tracks so you see that people are getting around mostly by bike but actually across from the Yakinyeti hotel restaurant if you look this way we actually see the royal anandapur tea company exporters of specialty teas so of course you can come over here and grab teas or any sort of pastries right now but this is actually a building from the old anandapur when they did have that tea exporting company we see one of the local transportation units that they use here. They do have these sort of signs that are telling the tourists what sort of things that they can do here. Like here we see the Shangri-La Trekkers Inn and Internet Cafe towards the right. We see the Kali River Rapids, the Lantern Festival, the Maharaja Jungle Trek. All of these things are things that the tourists can do here in Anandapur. And of course, the main thing is journey to Mount Everest with Himalayan escapes, tours, and expeditions. Right here, this whole area is still the old area of Anandapur. I told you guys there was that other area called Sergozong that is by the Himalayas. We'll go to that in just a little bit. But right now, we're going to venture left and explore the Maharaja Jungle Trek. But first, we do see this shop where people can shop for certain things that people of Anandapur have made in their local customs, even have some special spices in here special statues and actually before we get to the Maharaja jungle trek and the Cali River Rapids over here we do see one of the animal locations this is where the Siamings are and you can read the sign because of course in Anandapur they are very respectful of the animals and of nature many forest animals share our village with us and are free to do so these Siamings often travel to the river stopping to rest or feed at these shrines where gifts of food have been left for them so we really see how the people of Anandavur really do appreciate and respect the nature and the wildlife. They have left food at this shrine for the Siamings to come. And they do have this cool map for the tourists coming to Anandavur, a trekking guide of Anandavur Township. We see all the treks in shop plus all of the lodging that people can have. So guys, here of course, we see the Cali River Rapids entrance. And like I said, the ladies of Anandapur actually set this up to try to make money off of the land while still being respectful to it. And actually making our way past there, we are coming up on the old Maharaja Palace, now turned into the Maharaja Jungle Trek, where tourists can come and enjoy the nature of Anandapur area. We see here the Maharaja Jungle Trek. Please enjoy this walking tour of the old royal forest. And we can see this little sign outside the Maharaja Jungle Trek. It says, since very ancient times, the Rajas of Anandapur have hunted tigers in this forest. In AD 1544, King Bhima Disbath decreed the forest a royal preserve close to all to save his guests and build a royal hunting lodge whose ruins lie nearby. After 1948, the royal forest was given to the people of Anandapur. Today, the forest protects not only the remaining tigers and other wildlife, but is a vulnerable watershed of the Chakrandi River and some of the last remaining virgin forests in this region. And we see this tree has been decorated by the Anandapur people. And as you are walking through this forest, just remember that this was the old palace grounds of the royal Maharaja people. And if we look outside over here, we see the remnants of this palace. And we even see some of the famous tigers that roam this area. Now remember how the person who made this place a hunting ground, he died by the tigers. So people probably are a little bit cautious about wing over here, but they have a sign. Although tigers are present in the forest, you will be very safe by walking on the well-traveled paths. We see the remnants of the ancient palace that was here for the Maharaja people. We see the paintings that they have to dedicate to the tigers, as well as paintings of people of the Maharaja of the past. And we see how this building has been here since the 16th century, probably before that. But you see how it has crumbled and it is coming down but some of the paintings and everything are still preserved here. All right guys, we are out of the Maharaja jungle trek and now we are back in the area where we were. Now let's head this way. 
I'm actually going to be venturing into the other area of Anandapur called Sirkazong. All right, guys, we've made our way out of the Anandapur area. We've made our way into the Sirkazong area, and we see the mountains in the background, and we also see a shrine right up here set up for the Forbidden Mountain and the Himalaya Mountain. And we see inside there is the protector of the mountain, the Yeti. And in the background, if we look, we can see some of some explorers going through the expedition through the Forbidden Mountain. Like I told you guys, the people of Anandapur have set up these shrines to help try to prevent the Yeti attacking, it's trying to give the Yeti some offerings. You can see some of the offerings down here. Actually, look at this building right here. This is gonna be turning into another hotel. It looks like Yeti Palace Hotel opening next season. So people are capitalizing on the tourism here. So we can kind of see the difference between the formal Anandapur area and this area of Circa Zong. They're a little bit similar. This seems a little bit more touristy. We see the hotel signage for this uh, hotel opening next season. If we look over here this building is called Gupta's gear this has backpacks boots oxygen tanks first class mountaineer equipments and of course this is all stuff that you're gonna need to go on your expedition to the Forbidden Mountain and as we get closer to the mountain we can hear some something happening in that mountain I definitely hear some screaming I hear the train rolling past and the whole vibe kind of changes over here from Anandapur to Sirkazong. Sirkazong feels a little bit colder. It feels like we're in the mountains. It feels like the weather has changed, even though it hasn't only walked a few feet. But it feels like we're less in a foresty, tropical, Asian place into more of a cold and mysterious place near the mountains. And of course, we do still see the Royal Anandapur Tea Company. Now, of course, the Royal Anandapur Tea Company is the former area right here this is where the anandapur tea company was held inside of this building and they used to have the trains growing up through this mountain and there we see the mountain in the back and we actually see right here expedition everest now this looks like a sign that they have just kind of added on here this probably used to not have a sign on it but now that they are offering these tours to the people they probably just slapped on this sign so that people would know what's going on over here the same with this sign up here it says himalayan escapes welcomes expedition everest this doesn't look like a permanent sign but it looks like the people of anandapur have slapped on this sign so that people know this is where you need to go and actually while you're inside waiting to get on expedition Everest, we can see a museum kind of dedicated to the Forbidden Mountain, dedicated to the Yeti, showcasing some documents that people have found over the years while going through the Forbidden Mountain. And here we can see some of that. This was an old tea company office and now it turned into an uh, expedition travels office. Here we see another one of these shrines dedicated to the Yeti. Actually in this room right here, if we look up, we see a shirt and on that shirt we see Circa Zong, the name of this area. And check out, this is all of the things that they have dedicated to the museum. We see some of the stuff that they have recovered from expeditions. And up here, of course, we see another Royal Anandapur Tea Company sign. And of course, just outside of the Forbidden Mountain, we do have a bunch of offerings. Artwork here outside of the mountain, maybe to try to protect people from the Yeti. All right, guys, but there you have it. That is the backstory, secrets, and tour of Asia here at the Animal Kingdom. Awesome, awesome backstory with the Nandapur and everything, and just everything about this land is awesome. I love it. Even that, I love it so much better even now that I know the backstory of it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this backstory because I know that I did not know really anything about this place. But now that I do know, I have a deeper understanding of it and I have even more respect for it. I have more respect for the Imagineers to even be able to create a place with this deep of a backstory and place it in here. It really feels like this land has been here forever. It feels like they didn't make this 20 years ago or however long they made it. It feels like it's been here for centuries, since the 16th century, like they said, with the Maharaja people. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, deep dive into Asia here at Animal Kingdom. I know I did. Um, I want to do another one into Dino Land USA and another one into Discovery Island here at Animal Kingdom because every single land in this park has a crazy deep backstory. Something that you would never even guess, but it does. That's why I love this park so much. That's why I think Joe Rohde is the best Imagineer ever and all the people who worked on Animal Kingdom. Just really, really amazing. 
so yeah guys that's it for me if you did enjoy this video a like would be appreciated down below i know this was a pretty long video so thank you for sticking around if you made it through the whole video it really means a lot if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button let me know what deep dives you want me to do here at disney world or universal or really anywhere i want to do stuff around orlando as well but yeah guys thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video